Shaders in Pygame have been something which I've seen being frequently discussed. However, I haven't seen many resources teaching how shaders can be made with Pygame, so that's what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial. For this tutorial, I will assume some knowledge in writing GLSL shaders, since that's not what I'm going to be focusing on teaching. Instead, I'm going to be showing you how Pygame shaders can be integrated into Pygame using a module that I wrote called Pygame Shaders. So with that, let's get into it. Taking a look here, we can see I have some very simple base code, and when I go ahead and run this, you can see we just get a blank window with a red square in the top left, and we can move it with the A and D keys. So that's pretty much our starting point. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually install Pygame shaders. So for that, I'm going to do pip install dash dash upgrade Pygame underscore shaders. And for you, this will download a bunch of stuff. But for me, I have it all downloaded already. So we can go ahead and minimize the terminal. So with that, let's begin. So the first thing that we need to do is actually just import our module. Okay, so right now, if we take a look at our project, what we're doing is we have this display, which we're just setting as a regular Pygame display, and we're just filling that with a black color and drawing a rec to it. However, what we want to do is change this from a regular Pygame display to an OpenGL render renderable display. And we can do that by just coming after we set the size and simply adding the flag pygame.opengl. Now, we've, now that we've turned this into an OpenGL display, we can see that if we go ahead and run this, that's the wrong command, whoops. This isn't going to actually work because this is no longer a display which can just be rendered to using Pygame's regular f rendering functionality, such as display.fill, display.blit, pygame.draw.rect, etc. So the only way we can render to this display is using the OpenGL rendering functionality. And that's essentially what Pygame Shaders is going to take care of for us. However, we obviously still want to be able to use Pygame's rendering functionality. So what I'm going to do is rename this to screen. And I'm going to come below this and just create a new Pygame surface. And set this with a size of 600 by 600. And this will basically be the display where, well, the surface at least, where we will do all of our Pygame rendering. And then at the end, we will use Pygame shaders to convert that to an OpenGL texture, which can be rendered to our OpenGL display. So one more thing I would like to do before we get into that is actually set a color key for this display, which I'll just set to black. And essentially what this means, if you're unfamiliar, is that any black that gets put onto this surface will be treated as transparent. And you'll see why this is useful a little later on when we maybe want to add a background shader. Okay, so now let's actually create a shader. I will call this screen shader since we're going to be using it for drawing our screen. And I'm going to set it equal to pygame underscore shaders dot shader. And this takes in a few arguments. The first is the size of the shader, which I'll set 600, 600, since we want it to be obviously be the full size of the display. The next is the actual display size. So that's also 600, 600. And the next is the position that we would like the shader to be rendered at. So for us, that's 0, 0, which corresponds to just the center of the screen. Now, the next two arguments here are the vertex path and the fragment path. So these are actually, these are essentially our GL, GLSL shaders themselves. Now, because I'm not really teaching GLSL in this tutorial, you can see here, I already have our fragment and vertex shader already written. So, so to summarize, if you don't know what GLSL is, essentially you can think of the vertex shader as handling all of the position stuff for our shader and the fragment shader for handling all of our shaders colors. So in the vertex shader, I will briefly explain what this does, but once again, not a full GLSL tutorial. We're essentially taking in two variables here, and these are passed from the Pygame shaders module. Very important, if you are wanting to use the Pygame shaders module, your vertex shader must include these two lines as these are what allow the module to essentially communicate with your shader. 
So essentially this just takes in a position and a texture coordinate and this outputs a fragment texture coordinate which will be taken in by our fragment shader. So that's essentially all we're doing. We're just setting the position equal to the position that we get taken that we get that gets fed into the shader and we're also just setting the fragment texture coordinate equal to the vertex text coord which we also get fed in. Then into our fragment shader, we can see that we take in this fragment text coordinate this time and we also and we're outputting a color and we also take in an image texture and notice how this has been marked with uniform and this means that we can essentially send our own data to the shader and I'll demonstrate that just now. And essentially all we're doing in this shader is we're setting our color equal to a texture of our image texture at the fragment texture coordinates that we get fed in. So that's just a very brief explanation of what these shaders are doing. So let's go back to our main script and simply load them in. So this is located at path shaders slash vertex dot glsl and this is at shaders slash fragment dot glsl. Okay, so we've essentially just created our shader here and this is everything it needs. So the next thing that we need to do is actually take care of the rendering stuff for this shader. So now that we have set our color key of this display that we're rendering to black, we can no longer just render black. We can no longer just fill the display with black since that's not going to work. It's going to be treated as transparent. So essentially what we need to do is we need to add a new line up here called pygame underscore shaders dot clear and pass in a color. So let's just do black as well. So now essentially this pygame pygame shaders dot clear is basically doing what this what this would normally do in a regular pygame project. And this display dot fill is now essentially acting as what's create making our display transparent. And the last thing we need to do in terms of shader rendering is come down here where we're updating the display. One important side note is that this must be pygame.display.flip and not pygame.display.update. This will not work with that. And we need to come here and we need to say screen shader dot render and we want to render to the display. And essentially this takes care of all of the OpenGL work of taking our display, converting it to an OpenGL texture and rendering it to our screen. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If we go ahead and run this now, you'll see that we have our example again. However, now this is being run through a shader and is not just using how we would normally do it with Pygame. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. So the first thing that we can do here is change the color. So I think what I'm going to do is just come here and change this to a gray. And as you can see, we now have a gray, a gray display. And what I'm going to do is come into our fragment shader here and add a new uniform called, and this will be of type float and it will be called time. And essentially what I'm going to do is create a sine wave pattern which will demonstrate the, the use of the shader. So I'm just going to do that quick. Okay, this should be everything to have our sine wave effect. And now if I just come back in here, this is where I would demonstrate the uniform thing that I was talking about earlier. Notice how we've marked this time variable as a uniform, meaning that we can pass in our own time variable from our script. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come up to the top and create a variable called time. I'll start it equal to zero. And then just every frame of our loop, I'll just increment time by let's just say 0 0.1. Now what I can do is come above our screen shader dot render and type screen shader dot send. And this will basically send the data to this uniform. So we've named our variable time. So that has to be the variable name here. And the data is just a float. So in a new list, I'm just going to write time. And the reason this is a list is because you can also have things like vector twos as this uniform uh, where you need to send multiple pieces of data. But for this, we're only sending one.
So essentially what this does is it sends the time variable to this fragment shader and in the fragment shader we're just using it for a sine wave. So now if I go ahead and run this you will see that our display is basically flickering in and out and this is a result of our sine wave. So this is kind of proof that we're not just using the basic Pygame rendering functionality and we're actually rendering this using a shader. Okay, let's take a look at another example now. Let's say we want to create a water shader. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this time uniform thing and just revert our fragment shader back to what it originally was. And let's go ahead, I'm just going to grab from my notes here, I'm just going to grab this water.png. And this is just a pixelated water just some pixelated water I found online. And just like a normal image, I'm going to go ahead and load this in. I'm going to say img is equal to pygame.image.load. And this is just called water.png. Make sure to convert it. And that's pretty much the loading process done. So I'm going to actually comment out, just get rid of these lines here for that movement of the square we had and instead I'm going to say display display dot blit image at let's just say 300 300 so now running this you can see we have our water shader being displayed and I think I'm actually just going to swap this back to being black there we go Okay, so now let's go ahead and actually create a shader for this image instead of just rendering it to our screen. So I'm going to come up here and create a new shader. And this is going to be called water shader. And I'm just going to copy all of this stuff here. And I think I'm actually going to define this after I define our image because the size that we want our shader to be is the size of our image. So we're going to say image dot get get width slash image dot get height. And these should all stay the same. And for now, we'll just render using the same vertex and fragment GLSL shaders that we spoke about earlier. So now I can just come down here and say that we want to render our water shader and we want to render we want to instead of just taking and I can now get rid of this display dot blitz since water shader dot render is essentially going to replace it and I essentially want to render our image here so if I go ahead and run this now you see we just get our our image but this time it's centered as per what we specified here which is just zero zero which means it is centered so now let's actually go ahead and apply a more interesting shader so once again I'm not going to be specifying talking about the details of how the shader works I will link I I actually found this shader online and I'll link it below so I'm just gonna go ahead and write it out quick Okay, so this is basically the fragment shader complete. As you can see, if we look down in our main function here, instead of just rendering the image texture at the specified coordinate, we pass the coordinate, whoops, we pass the coordinate through the sine wave function, which essentially just takes the takes the coordinate and applies a bit more of an advanced sine wave function than what we were looking at earlier. And as you can see here, this also takes in two uniforms. By the way, this uniform, I forgot to mention, we don't have to worry about passing this ourselves since Pygame Shaders takes care of passing the texture uniform for us. So we only need to worry about these two uniforms here, which is just TX and TY. These just specify, these just essentially act as the same thing as what the time variable was doing in our last example. So what we're going to do now is 
come here and we're going to we need to create those two uniforms so we're going to say water oops not there water shader dot send and we are sending the tx variable and we're just going to assign this to time and I'm going to do the exact same thing for ty and now if we go ahead and run this we get an error I'll be right back ah it looks like I just forgot a semicolon Oop, another error Oh, I accidentally called this sin wave instead of sine wave and as you can see now this does work however I think we are stepping through time a little bit too fast so let's just go ahead and slow that down and as you can see we have a water shader now now obviously the shader doesn't look the best because this is just a shader I found online however it does work and for just a few lines of code of GLSL code I don't think this is too bad so anyway this is how this is basically the workflow of using pygame underscore shaders it's in my opinion quite an easy to use module and abstracts away a lot of the OpenGL. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.